Welcome to the show. Today we have part two of my, I don't know if you call it a hatchet build or a tomahawk build. I haven't really decided. Uh, by the time I title this video, I probably will have decided. But anyway, if you saw the first video, you'll kind of know where we're going with this. If you haven't seen it yet, I will put a link right up here, right here, right now. And uh, you can go back and watch that video. Uh, but please do come back and see this one because we're actually going to cover some pretty good ground and I think it'll be a helpful video. Uh, and also at the end, we'll have a little fun demonstration. So where we left off last time, I was done with the ax head itself or the hatchet head, and we're coming to the part where we need to fit that to a handle. Now, part of the reason that this became a two-part video is because I had some really unexpected difficulty with the whole process of putting the handle on, fitting it, getting it to fit right. So we'll get into that here and I'll show you what I did. And also, as usual, you know, it, this is all a learning process for me. So I would welcome any comments from you. Um, I guess the biggest piece of advice that I would probably give after going through this whole process is to start with a handle that fits to begin with, or at least that's close, you know, that you can shape it. Um, if anything, start with a handle that's a little too big because you can't really add material to a handle, but you can definitely carve it down. Uh, in this case, I had the opposite problem. I had a handle that was a little bit too small, and uh, so I had some trouble getting it fitted really properly. Um, but again, I did find some workarounds for that, and uh, we'll get into that here. First, let me give a real quick shout out to Wrangler Star. I'm sure most of you are familiar with his channel, but if you haven't seen his videos on how to uh, rehandle an axe or a hatchet, uh, definitely go and check those out. I would say at least half of what I know about putting a new handle on a, a hammer or hatchet, I actually learned by watching his videos. But with that said, I am going to take you through my process and you might see and learn a few things here, especially considering that I did make some mistakes here and hopefully by watching those mistakes, you may be able to avoid them yourself. So to begin with, I just went to a hardware store. I picked up a hatchet handle that seemed like it would be a pretty good fit and brought it home. And then the first thing I did was remove that lacquer that they always put on there. I don't really care for that lacquer finish and I wanted to apply a linseed oil finish of my own. So I just took some sandpaper and took off all the lacquer. Then I started fitting the head to the handle. And what I learned immediately was that the handle was definitely a little too narrow and too tall. So I had to take off some of that height. And because of how narrow it was, I really had to drive the head down into, I'm not sure what that part of the handle is called, but the part that's supposed to sit right below the ax head. Uh, it's a little bit thicker, a little bit stronger because sometimes, you know, if you miss when you're swinging or whatever, it has to be able to take a blow. And in order to get the eye of the, of the head to fit, I really had to drive it down into that area. So there was a lot of work here that would not have been necessary if I had picked out a correct size handle to begin with. But in some ways it was actually beneficial because it allowed me to do some more of the work that I would be doing if, for example, I just selected a piece of hardwood and, uh, and carved it down and shaped it all myself. I got a little taste of that experience as I reshaped the end of this handle. So I spent quite a bit of time working on that, trying to get the fit right. And there was a certain point where I realized if I went any further, I would probably actually be getting back into the narrow part of the handle. So that's where I stopped removing material and just said, you know, this is going to have to be close enough. Now, of course, the, the way this handle came from the factory, it already had a groove cut in it for the wooden wedge. But because I had had to shorten it so much, uh, most of that groove was actually gone. So I went back in with a hacksaw blade and recut that groove. I would definitely recommend using something like a hacksaw, even though of course it takes a lot longer than a more aggressive wood saw. It's very important to have an extremely thin saw blade, otherwise that groove or that slit is gonna wind up far too wide. So when it came to the final fitting, I put the hatchet head on, put down some leather gloves on the table here so I didn't damage the wood. And just to get it started, I used the technique where the head is actually upright. And then once I had it seated to where it wasn't gonna fall off, I flipped it over and used this technique which again is one that I learned by watching Wrangler Star's videos. And after a few good whacks with the 2x4, I had the head seated down to the point where there was a little bit of wood beginning to, um, beginning to roll right underneath the hatchet head. It looks like you might be damaging the handle, but this is actually a good thing because it lets you know that things are seated very well and you have a good tight fit. Putting in the wedge for this actually went pretty easy. I had to trim down the length a little bit so that it would fit the, the eye of the hatchet from front to back. But otherwise, this process is pretty self-explanatory. Now there are different schools of thought on this. Some people say, hey, you put a little glue on there and that way if you get any cracking in the wood, that wood glue will sort of help to reinforce that. Under ordinary circumstances, I would say that's probably not necessary. 
you know, if you're using quality hardwood and you've done the process correctly, you shouldn't need to add any wood glue. Uh, you'll see that a little bit later I did wind up adding a little glue, but that was mostly because of an error that I made later on. But we'll get to that in a minute. I do think it can be a good idea to lubricate the wedge with a little bit of boiled linseed oil. Some people will do that with the axe handle itself when they're putting the head on. Really, a lot of that is up to the you know personal discretion or personal tastes of the, the person who's doing the work. So once I had the wedge driven into place, I trimmed the handle off to the height I wanted, and I moved on to what should have been the final step in mounting the head of the hatchet, and that is to put in the metal wedge that goes crosswise to the wooden wedge. Now I might be using the wrong terminology here, but since both the wood and the metal are shaped like wedges, that's the terminology I'm going to use. Now here again there are a couple different schools of thought. Some people will put in two wedges, some people put them in you know, perpendicular, some crosswise. As you can see I decided to go with a single wedge and I went at I would say roughly a 45 degree angle to the wooden wedge. Now I did trim this down a little bit because I knew it was a little bit large for this size of hatchet but as it turns out I didn't really trim it down far enough and you'll see here that I did crack the wood. Now the truth is a small crack doesn't necessarily affect the durability of the hatchet but I really felt like it was a little bit too large of a crack so I decided to come in with some glue as mainly as a filler maybe to add a little bit of strength. So I applied that glue, cleaned it up a little bit uh, let everything dry and then tested the fit of the hatchet head and I have to say it actually turned out pretty well it definitely is not loose I have no doubt that it's strong enough for let's say light duty type of work all in all I'm quite satisfied I learned a lot along the way and of course if it does ever loosen up uh, I'll be a little bit better prepared to pick out the right handle and get a really good fit so to finish the wood I used boiled linseed oil applied a couple of coats I won't go into a lot of detail on that process it's pretty self-explanatory but I will say that if you're working with boiled linseed oil you have to be careful about how you dispose of the rags that you've used I'd recommend rinsing them with water and then leaving them to dry in an area where there's no flammable materials around and you know make sure to give them enough space they can air out and that heat isn't going to build up so with that done all that was left to do is sharpen up the edge and go and give this thing a test run for sharpening I just used my 1x30 grinder. Of course there are a thousand ways you can sharpen an axe and everybody's got their preferred technique. For my purposes I started with a lower grit just to make sure I had a good bevel and then finished sharpening it with a higher grit belt. I think it was maybe a, I, don't, I forget if it was a 400 or a 600 grit. Not to the point where it was razor sharp but to the point where some melons wouldn't be able to stand up to it. Well, that is it for today. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you got something out of it. I'm satisfied with the overall result. I think this turned out to be a pretty good looking hatchet and I really learned a lot along the way. So again, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And until next time, I'll just say have a wonderful day and we'll see you in the next video.